My name is Whit Baskin. I'm a head trainer here at Savage Sports Performance. Took up weightlifting when I was about 15 years old. When I was 19, I won Teenage Nationals powerlifting. Uh, the only teenager in 1997 to bench press over 500 pounds. When Texas Strongest Man in 97, I was 19 or 20, weighed in three, 312 pounds. The whole time I was powerlifting, I always wanted to be strong. Which you see on TV, World Strongest Man. Uh, 20 years old when I got the invite, I got the invitation to 98 World Strongest Man in Morocco. At that time, it was invitation only. I turned it down, actually, because I thought if I went and sucked it up, I'd never get a fight back, right? Well, the next year rolls around, and I cut down to uh, about right at 220 pounds to get real lean, you know, for the ladies. Came back, and I got, I got the invite, which I was not expecting, and I gained, I have it all documented in my old training logs, I gained exactly 45 or 46 pounds in five weeks, and then uh, went to Baltimore. Early on, it was the Whit Baskin Show. The 21-year-old Oklahoman used his combination of power and overall athletic ability to capture the first event, the carry and drag. Off to a good start in his world's strongest man. I didn't even know any of the events. didn't have time to train for any of them. One of the events was a, uh, a car hold, technically a test of uh, static strength endurance. I can always tell when I watch a competitor do the car hold if they quit because of physical fatigue or mental fatigue because it hurts too bad and 90 plus percent quick because it's it, it literally feels like you're being tortured everybody here knows this will be just all how tough you are how much pain you can take that is a new world record hey, he is giving everything he can in this event but uh the last event was a medley where you have to run with two objects do a drag very uh very taxing on your cardio system and I was so spent from my uh, car hold that I came in dead last and barely missed qualifying for the finals. I beat the guy named Jeep Swenson who played Bane on Batman or Batman 2, about uh, 6'4", 440. I mean, they're giants. I've beaten guys six foot eight. And they're all huge. That's why I, my little moniker, they used to call me Giant Killer, was my, my uh, nickname. 2000, the next year, I uh, Tied with Phil Fisher for second place in America's Strongest Man. I was one event away from being a America's Strongest Man in 2000. Whit Baskin. One of the world's strongest men. Whit Baskin nearly died in this. After a horrifying accident two months ago. Baskin flipped his car several times when driving home late at night. I could tell when I got here that his vehicle had rolled at least once and, and possibly twice. Left Whit Baskin in a coma for three weeks and had doctors doubting he would even survive. Says going from 270 pounds to 180 isn't an easy thing to cope with. One to two years leading up to the wreck, one to two years post wreck, I have no memory of. But a lot of it, when I see pictures or see video, it does come back to me. And over the years, it has actually gotten, gotten better, my, my memory. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for my parents. I mean, you name it, they saved my life several times. One time, my feeding tube slipped. I went to septic shock, the big scar on my stomach. I had a heart rate of 220 to 280 beats a minute. You name it, I had several close calls like that. Uh, had to go to two rehab hospitals, had to spend three to four months at a behavioral facility up in Tulsa, where I did work all day on speech, motor skills, coordination, Come memory, on, you name it. Come on, Whit, you can do it. Throw it, throw it, Whit, right to me. Come on, come on, come on, Whit. Ever since I was at the rehab center, and first thing I can remember, I wanted to make a comeback, and everybody kind of laughed, whatever. And during that time, I went back to school at Southeast Oklahoma State, finished up my business degree, BBA, and I'm 15, 15 hours shy of an MBA, which I have no desire to work on in this lifetime, and studied kinesiology, where I got my master's. Uh, 10 years to the day, almost to the hour of my coma. I was actually at one of the rehab centers and I saw an ad for the 2002 Oklahoma Strongest Man up in Tulsa and saw that one of the events was the car hold. Well, I got online, told people, I'm gonna enter that contest 10, 12 months from now and I'm gonna win the car hold. Everybody just laughed or whatever. And sure enough, uh, a year later and 70 pounds heavier, I, I just, I more than doubled the best time. You know, technically I don't, I don't look at myself as disabled. Perhaps I need to do a better job at that. You know, I'm a smart guy. I didn't, I couldn't told you anything about a TBI, traumatic brain injury, t 15, 20 years ago. <clears throat> but uh, people don't realize what, what I was involved of. I'm 35 years old. I've never been married, never, you know, never been in love. I don't, 
you know, never done a lot of things a lot of people my age have because I miss years of my life training so hard and then the past 10 years of my life, almost 12 years, have just been a blur. So I do, I do struggle with that a lot. Just kind of lost time, you know, for sure. That's probably, that's one of the worst things. That and uh, just depression, loneliness. Other than that, pretty much all my deficits are pretty, pretty well fixed. So I felt like from the beginning, the reason I moved here was to start my public ministry, helping others. Three weeks ago, had a guy contact me, Bud Jeffries, who's kind of a big name in the strength world. Through one of his friends, he's, he's getting me hooked up to do a, a exhibition December 9th in Davenport at the Florida Strongest Man. I won't be competing, I could, but I have limitations with like my left shoulder. I can't do some of the events too well. I could do okay, I wouldn't win. And they're putting me on the poster and advertising it as a uh, world record attempt. So I'm training for that right now. I'm trying to bring my world record uh, December in Devonport. I've always felt like I've had a, a God-given gift for you know perseverance, endurance, and uh, I'm a good athlete. I'm not the great athlete, not the best athlete, but I've I've never. And I say this, you know. As humbly as it is what it is, I've never met someone as driven as me, as I, uh, ever. I feel like part of my purpose in uh, God's spring in my life is for me to tell my story, help others.